In a lot of ways, surrealism is like Dada. They too are against irrationality, uh, feeling like the rational focus of society was something that undermined the importance of fantasy and imagination. So surrealism really wanted to move beyond the rational limits of society and get to a more intense version of reality. That's what they meant by the surreal. They very much focused on the unconscious to do that. They felt like that was a pathway to get them into this more intense version of reality. So when they focus on the unconscious and try to move beyond the limits of our rational existence, in the end, they really felt like this was something that would improve society. This is something that would make society better. So it's got some utopian drives within the movement. But beyond the emphasis on the irrational, Dada and surrealism share some other similarities. And in fact, many Dadaists end up joining in with the surrealist movement. So very much like Dada had before them, the surrealists were all about being avant-garde. Let's make art in a new way. We don't have to do traditional mediums. We don't have to use traditional techniques. We can have new goals for what art should do. Uh, and so we have a lot of different kinds of looks uh, within surrealism as a movement. It's not really a style. It's not really a way that art looks, but it's more a way of thinking. Um, and these artists are really sharing similar concerns and similar sorts of goals when they're creating their works of art. So since they're trying to get down to the unconscious or the imaginative or the fantastical, um, and they felt like these were things that would make society better, they really heavily focused on a few like specific techniques that they felt like would give them the most opportunities to tap into that unconscious and to tap into the imaginative, uh, imaginative rather. So one thing that they do is psychic automatism. Okay, and technically, uh, this is something that's very much influenced by Pierre Janet, who was a psychologist, uh, and he really kind of um, wanted to put people into like this self-induced trance as a way to release conscious control, and the surrealists kind of do the same thing. Um, psychic automatism was a huge thing for surrealists, and they felt like it was really important, and that it was something that was a way for them to shut off reason and to shut off the control over their thoughts and instead kind of just let their unconscious take over. I really think of it quite a bit like doodling, right? If you start to doodle while you're listening to class lecture and you aren't really paying attention to what your hand is doing, that would be something that is psychic automatism. Um, you aren't really thinking about what's happening with your hand and so your unconscious has kind of taken over there. Another technique that they use is juxtaposition. And essentially this is just um, taking an object and contradicting the viewer's expectations for that object, taking that object out of like its rational function. Uh, and in that moment of surprise, in that moment of, of contradiction, the unconscious kind of takes over in the part of, of the viewer. We have an unconscious reaction to this juxtaposition of what we expect versus what we see. And that's another technique that the surrealists use very often. In addition to that, they like to focus quite a bit on dreamlike imagery. Things that look as though they came out of a dream, whether they're using like really bright kind of garish colors or whether they're combining um, you know, narratives or objects that don't seem to make sense with each other. Dreams were very important for the surrealists. Another thing they used pretty often was chance, feeling like chance and um, kind of uh, releasing control over the creation of the work was another way for the unconscious to come through. Um, another thing that they use, and the last one we're going to kind of mention here, is just drug-like, or sorry, drug-induced states. So, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. They take drugs, then their unconscious is kind of taking over and overriding the conscious parts of their brain. So all of these are different methods. The surrealists really had kind of these tools that they wanted to use to try and get down to the unconscious, to try and move beyond the rational and into the imaginative. So when we think about all of these methods together and the focus of the surrealist to getting down to the unconscious, what we have to understand is that this is really a conceptual movement. Their goal is to express a concept to you, right, which is the concept of the unconscious and how that can lead to a better society. So uh, understanding that as a part of surrealism, it really helps us to kind of understand what they're about, which is communicating these concepts. 
Now there's two different branches of surrealism. Uh, we kind of lump surrealist artists into these different categories, even though it's not a style. There's naturalistic surrealism or there's biomorphic surrealism. Naturalistic, as the name suggests, is recognizable naturalistic objects, figures, and so on that are put into the works of art. Biomorphic, on the other hand, this is heavily reliant on automatic techniques. And so very often um, artists are using like, psychic automatism or other kinds of techniques to really kind of close off the conscious control of their brain. And as a result, the forms look like biological kind of elements like cells or amoebas or something like that. So that's where biomorphic comes into play. This really was an avant-garde movement. It really was moving forward in new directions and pushing the limits on what art was, how art was made, and what art could do. Uh, and of course, that didn't go over well with everyone. In the Degenerate Art Show from 1937, put on by the Nazis, where they put in all of those works of art that they felt like were subhuman in a way, 650 works of those were from surrealists. But regardless of what people thought about surrealism in the past or what they think about it today, it is true that this is a movement that holds a lot of fascination for us in our contemporary society.